Tables are a great way to display data in your Power BI report, and you may use indicators to make that data more readable or easier to just see at a glance. But often the native indicators are quite limiting and just poor when it comes to how they look and in terms of what you can do with them. So today we're going to learn how to supercharge your tables by creating these indicators and they're completely flexible with what you can do. It's really simple to do and I've broken it down into some really easy steps that we can follow along. All the files are available in the description so feel free to download them and follow along. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's go ahead and break down what we're going to cover in this video. So we're going to start off with learning how to create our different categories. So we can see we have all these different values and we have different statuses within our indicators. So for example, target met, investigate, exceeded, etc. We're going to learn how to create these different categories. And once we've covered that, we'll learn how to apply logic to our categories or our indicators. So for example, if our cells are above, let's bring cells in quickly. So if our sales are above, let's say 2 million, we might want to say exceeded. If it's below 100,000, we might want to say investigate. So that's just an example of a logic that we might be able to apply to our indicators and we'll cover how to actually do that as well. Then we'll move on to formatting our indicators. So we can see that they have different colors. So how do we actually apply formatting to the indicators that we're creating? And then finally, we'll cover how to actually implement and get these indicators into our table and then how to size them, etc. Because this is done with custom code where we utilize HTML and CSS, it's slightly unique in how we actually have to place these into our tables. So we'll cover how to do that. So let's just go ahead and get started. So let's start off with creating our categories. If you're following along in the practice files, you'll find this folder called create buttons. And if we open up the measure, so let's open that up, we'll find various different variables that have our categories. You'll see this script that doesn't necessarily look like DAX, and that's because it isn't. This is HTML. So let's just break that down slightly. Because Power BI natively wants to read DAX, we have to specify that this is HTML. So when we refer to XML and S, I said that without stumbling, and we refer to this over here, this is a universal standard for HTML. So we're telling Power BI, this is HTML, treat it like that. And then after that, we have this thing called a class. Now this isn't a HTML and CSS lesson, but a class is essentially like a measure or a variable. Essentially, we're specifying a class, so we're saying this is the below typical class. And later, when we want to format this category, we can refer back to this class. And then we have exactly what's in our button, so below typical. So if I change that in our code, so let's go back to our DAX. We have our HTML, so we're specifying as HTML. We have our class. And then if we change below typical to let's say below average, we will see our category will change. So we can see now that says below average. So that's essentially our HTML that we want to write. And this here, our class, we need to refer to that later. So it's very important. This matches what we later have in our styling, but we'll get to that soon. So name this what our category is. So that's actually creating our categories and how we do that. So let's move on to how we apply logic to our indicators. So when certain conditions are met, different indicators appear. So I'm going to bring in region and then cells into our table. And we might want to say, if our cells are above 2 million, show exceeded. If it's below 100,000, show critical. Just different conditions for how our indicators might appear. So if we take a look at our create buttons uh, measure, what we'll find is we have our various different conditions and these are in variables. And then what we can do is use a switch or an if statement to show different um, buttons based on the conditions. Now, this isn't a lesson on how to write if statements, um, but essentially what we're doing, we're saying if our sum of cells, so this is a measure, which is essentially just a sum of cells. If our sum of cells is greater than 300,000, return the exceeded condition. So that's our code here. And then if our condition is 150,000, we want to show target met, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if we bring that into our table, we'll see it's returning different conditions based on our logic. So that's how we apply logic to our indicators, but we haven't actually formatted our buttons yet or actually brought that button into our visual. This is purely just the logic and the code that we're changing based on our various conditions. So now let's move on to our styling. So we've created our different categories. We've learned how to apply logic to them. Now we want to style them so that we have different colors for our different statuses or whatever we might have inside of our buttons. So how do we go about doing this? 
But if we take a look at our initial indicator measures, so this is when we created our categories, I mentioned that these categories all have this thing called a class within them. And a class is essentially like a measure or a variable where we can later reference them. So for example, if we move on to our styling folder, we can see we have this uh, button called or this measure called CSS. And this is where we're referring to the different classes that we've created in our indicators or our different categories. So for example, the below typical class, if we go to CSS, we can see below typical is referenced here as well. Now it's worth mentioning that this is case sensitive, so it has to match exactly as how you've defined it within your class. So let's go take a look at an example of where we change the formatting. So if we look at our lesson plan, we have this um, button called exceeded. Now let's change that so it's a very bright purple. So what I can do, if I go to my CSS elements, we can see we have this uh, category called exceeded. We want to change the background color. So let me just get the color. So if we insert a text box, go to colors and let's get a purple. If I co copy that color code and then go to my CSS styling and then go to ex uh, exceeded background color and then replace that with this color code, we will see our color has now adjusted as well. Now that looks horrible. So do play around with the colors that you want. So I'm just going to undo that. Ooh, it's not letting me for some reason. There we go. So we're back to our blue. Now you can add more styles or add more categories. And the way that we'll do that is we can just copy it, for example. So over here, if I just copy this section below, let's call this test category. Well, let's just call it test. If I go to my indicators, so we save that, go to my indicators. Once again, we can create a new variable, call this test. And then for our tag, for our class, if we call this test as well, we now have another category that links to our CSS because we've created the class. And then if we want to add another piece of logic, we could do that as well. So for example, if I did profit one, and then we said less than zero, we could return our test class. Now we don't have that in our conditions. Oh, I forgot the comma. We don't have that in our conditions, but that's just an example of how you add another class. So we've got our styling. So to wrap that up, we have, so looking back, we've created our styling, we've created our indicators. We now have to move on to actually placing our buttons inside our tables. Now, because we're utilizing HTML and CSS, it's slightly unique in the way that we do it. So I'll cover that now in a moment. So let's now move on to actually getting this button inside our table. So I'm going to create this table where I have region and then we have this measure called buttons in our visual sizing and placement. So let's open that up. So we can see within that measure, we have a has one value, so an if statement, and we're saying has one value, and we specify the column. So right now I have this specified to ship mode. So if I brought in this button inside our table, it's just not going to work. We have to specify which column we want that split to actually work on. So we have our indicator measure, so that's the different logic. We have our styling, and what we want to do is specify if that column appears, and those values in that column appear utilize um, the indicators and the styling. So if I change region to ship mode, we will now see our buttons will actually appear inside our table. Now this is pre-formatted because I've already created this. So the formatting is quite good, but generally you need to adjust these different values within this. So let's just do an example where we create something from scratch. So let me remove this table. I'll remove this table, create a new button measure. So let's just call this buttons two. And then this time let's change that to region. And now if we create a brand new table and bring in region and this new button that we created, we might have to adjust this to look at a image URL. So if I select that, we can now see our buttons uh, have been adjusted, but the formatting of these is just not right at all. It's not centered. How do we adjust that? So if we go to for select our table, go to formatting and then go to grid, we can adjust the padding, but once again, it's not adjusting the spacing of our actual buttons itself. So the first thing that we need to do is go to image size. So we can see right now, this is 75, 75. So let's change this to, I don't know, 25. And well, that's 255, that's way too big. Let's say that to 25. And let's change this to 150. So our width is much better. Now we can bring that down a little bit and we have our button there. 
But what we also have to do is then start adjusting our height and width to match that. So I have 25, 120. If I change this to 30 height and then 130 width, we could do the same on this side. So if I go to my button, change this over here. So 30, and then I think this was 125. We now have our sizing, but we can see it's hugging the top. So we might want this, we might want this more centered. So once again, we can see various options for our height and width. So for example, if I change our view box to minus 10, we can see it's adjust that. And let's do this to plus 20. Oh, it's disappeared. So that's too much. Let's do plus 10. Nope. Let's go minus 10. That will be more centered. That's too much. So you might have to play around with this slightly depending on how you want it, but you can adjust your formatting by adjusting these various uh, height and width that we have here. Now, much better. So there's a lot of different things we can do in terms of formatting, but this is essentially the final button that you need to create. Ensure it's got image URL as the data category, and then you can adjust the different spacing. So hopefully that video was useful. Um, do subscribe if you made it this far. We have a lot of videos on this channel where I teach Power BI, SQL, and Excel content. So hopefully that was useful.